Why would an anthropologist write a book about unaccountability? Well, because I'm looking at how players and power brokers navigate the system. And anthropology is the perfect, is the perfect discipline um, to uh, perfect perspective from which to really understand that. And you think a lot of powerful people are messing around with the media? That now we no longer know where is power and ends and where media begins? Right, right. So one of the things that we see is that these top power brokers um, have to, one of the, the new model of top power brokers seems to be, and it doesn't matter whether they're um, physicians or economists or, um, or shadow lobbyists of, a, of, a, of, another, um, of another sort. So one of the things we see is that they have to have something that, that is a neutral or impartial um, imprimatur. So they're affiliated with academic institutions or think tanks, which we think of as being you know, impartial. At the same time that they're working for um, defense c companies, for instance. And again, we the public have no way of knowing what they're actually up to. So a lot of unemployed journalists have gone to think tanks, and there are certain new think tanks that have been set up just in the past, you know, less than 10 years. Financed by big corporations. Uh, fi or financed, financed by um, companies or or countries, somebody at least with, with an agenda, and they hire top-notch journalists, some of whom are still working, still have outlets with the New York Times and the most prestigious places. Or and with again, governments. Or with governments. And again, the lines get very blurred because you read somebody's byline and you've read it before. He's a well-known, well, highly regarded journalist. And then what happens is that, you know, you, and you don't even know that he is being paid, albeit indirectly, but his salary comes from one of those interests. So it's a real danger to, to our, our democracy. The, in this incredibly valuable book. Thank you. And accountable. Uh, you have a chapter about media and power. Yes. Uh, and the evolution of media, or rather the devolution of uh -huh. media. You know, we've come to understand accountability as the test of any democratic state. Right. But you are here, you talk about the, basically the erosion of accountability. Right, yeah. But you start with the idea of porn and media. Ah. Explain <laughs> that. So why do I start a chapter on the media about with, with, with pornography? And that's because what the trends that we see in pornography are some of the same important trends we see in the media. So there's been a, a, um, a, a gutting of the centralization of pornography, just as there has been in media. But more importantly for the story I tell, what, what we see is that we see in online pornography a search for authenticity that didn't used to, to be there, according to an anthropologist who, who studies online pornography for a number of years. So people are looking, even in a genre that is by definition staged, porno, people are actually looking for something that's real. Now, how does that translate into, into media? Well, today what people trust are no longer institutions, courts, banks, parliaments, and media institutions nearly as much as they do what is in the realm of the private and the informal. And at the same time, there are PR firms, consulting firms that make a living off of fooling us, the consumer, making things look like what they're putting out in social media and the so-called news is actually unbiased when in fact they're working for clients. Sometimes those, those clients are unsavory dictators, um, murderous authoritarian regimes, and what they're doing is putting out messages, gaming search engines, gaming, setting up websites, setting up um, social media that looks like it's impartial, whereas in fact it's everything 
But, and the problem for us, the consumer, is that it's very difficult to tell the difference. And what we have today are even Pulitzer Prize winners. I mean, star people in the industry who now have gone into PR because they've lost their jobs with this gutting of, of the media, and they have to feed their families like everyone else. So it's so we have that has happened in parallel with the with the digital, the advance of the digital age and, and social media. Sometimes uh, news are generated by computers, you say? Yes, yes, G generated by computers, by algorithms even. Which is which is which is stunning. How can how could that actually really replace someone like a, an investigative journalist who's somebody who's going out and looking into what's what's actually happening? So that's going on, and then also news is 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 to a large degree now dictated by by everybody's consumer choices. So it's not what we necessarily should hear in terms of. Of, of our livelihoods and our finances and our health and so on, but it's what, what, is, enter what is entertaining.